we don't have enough places for people to live in Toronto. That is a problem. It's a fundamental issue that we've got on the purchase and on the uh, rental side. So sure. uh, that'll straighten itself out. But in the meantime, we've got oversupply, which means that's going to keep rent prices down, which I'm sure there's a lot of people who are happy to hear that. Sure. So, and then that's, uh, I mean, we'll probably go all over the place today because, uh, I mean, there was a big narrative on newcomers. If you look at the screen, newcomers welcome why yeah. immigration is fundamental to the strength of Toronto's real estate market. Of course. Uh, we talked about why Canada still needs immigrants despite soaring unemployment. Uh, yep. Canada's largest real estate markets see a big drop in new permanent residents. I mean, these are fucking stupid articles, though. I mean, really? There's been a travel ban for three months, um, and people are scared out of their minds to go anywhere. Like, this is obviously the case. This is nothing new. This is not news here, but... Well, it's it's the news. It's, it's maybe what people have already uh, assumed is happening, but it's nice to hear... I think what the narrative is this. This is what I this is what I believe. This is what I'm reading in between the well, lines. Well, hold on. Is, let, let me let me paint the whole narrative first and then we'll sure. we'll just get into it and we'll bounce around and we'll do whatever we're going to do. So, we may be in a deep hole, but here's why foreign investors think Canada is cool again. It's always been cool. Foreigners, hey, check it out. Frank Leo. Oh, did he disappear? Is he coming back? Oh, he's gone. Did you see that though? That segment yeah, was brought to you by Frank Leo and Associates. <laughs> now, now we're now BDC. If you need a business loan, guys, BDC is there for BDC's you. BDC is there for you. They're one of our sponsors. So foreigners are buying up Canadian gotcha. debt at a record pace. Um, we also have pandemic put strength. There's Frank again. Pandemic put strength of TO real estate market on display. Home yep. prices in Mississauga remain stable amid COVID pandemic. Pent up demand will boost Canadian home sales in June. Okay. How is Toronto real estate hot with unemployment at 14%? So this is our overall kind of narrative from the week, which, I mean, you can give your analysis now what that is all saying, and then I'll do my thing. Well, I don't really know what it's all saying because obviously each one's written from from different people. Um, I know where some of the articles and some of the people who are more at the uh, you know economics level with um with the country as a whole is what they're thinking about is how to be able to sustain uh you know what we have right now to bring money back into the country to have, get people starting to spend and maintain the long-term trajectory the whole reason immigration was getting built up from the beginning was in order to be able to replace our workforce right so if you look at 1990s japan uh, you know, they had an aging population, which led to a, a severe lack in young, skilled workers, right? And they were bringing them in from all different parts of, of Asia and the rest of the world. In Canada, we're, we're, we could face the same thing if we let our population age too much with the vast majority of the population being the baby boomers. It means that we're going to eventually not have enough people to be able to do the work that we need. So we need to start filling our um, jobs with those young, skilled workers. But the narrative is from what I was reading, was that people are concerned be that uh, bringing in more new Canadians in a time when unemployment's at 14% is the perception that Canadians, that they're going to be taking jobs away from Canadians. That's the perception. So they want to show, and we, we want to look at this as a, as a country here, not just like, you know, just looking at what's good for me, but what's looking good for the nation is I shouldn't be looking at immigration as uh, a way for me to have less jobs. It should be a way for me to look at has, having more jobs. The more skilled workers that we have means the more projects that are going to be underway. And whether you are in uh, you know, a trade or whether you're in retail or services, this is all good for everybody right across the board. When things start shutting down and, and enterprise isn't able to move forward and take on these big projects, we lose jobs overall. If, if there's those projects. There has there to be those, those projects. projects. There are those projects. There's lots of stuff that that's going to be happening. And as immigration comes in, more money, more tax revenue, more opportunities, more necessities to be able to build and to be able to uh, do what we need to do to grow as a country. And that comes from immigration. This is a huge part of how we're going to be able to get through the next 10 to 20 years. So the narrative that I'm reading is make sure that people know that having 
you know, there, there will always be people who are like this, where people will say, well, we shouldn't allow more Canadians to come. We shouldn't allow people from countries that are not skilled. We shouldn't allow people from, you know, different parts of the world to come here because I need a job and I don't have a job and unemployment so high. It's, we should have that opposite perspective. We need more people to come here. We need more people to be able to sustain um, the trajectory that we've been on. So yeah, we have I, I, I think... I think what scares people right now is, I mean, we definitely need that immigration to keep a steady trajectory upwards uh, and an incline, right? Because we need those buyers to, to create that, uh, that, that lack of supply for the demand that's there, right? But if, there, if unemployment's at 14% and there isn't a ton of extra work thrown at the marketplace and immigration's coming in, there's going to be like a glut somewhere, isn't there? Like there isn't going to yeah. be, no, there's just going to be enough job creation now to give everybody their jobs back and all these people coming in uh, 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 somewhere to work and a, and a chance to make some income. So a lot of people have the misconception that all immigrants are poor. A lot of people feel like if they're coming here, it's because it's like, you know, my family came from Ireland on the boat with sure. no money. No, I don't that's even think they let them in anymore unless they have money. I think that's, that's like, true. that's one of the boxes you have to check. Like, are you bringing a million bucks? Yeah, one of the programs that they have, obviously, I mean, there's some programs that they have, to, you know, to come here, whether it be refugee or whatever it is. But the main thing is, is majority of the people who are coming here are highly skilled or have uh, considerable net worth. So it means that they're going to come here right away, able to fill those skilled jobs. There's a 14% unemployment doesn't mean there's no work. It's just there, there's certain people who are not able to fill certain positions. And as the economy opens back up, sure. there's going to be positions that we just don't have people for. So some of those skilled workers are going to be coming in to fill those positions. And the people with money are going to be coming in who are going to be looking to set up a business, who are going to be looking at buying a house. We're going to be looking at stimulating the economy and all that money is going to create more jobs for the people that are, that are unemployed right now. But also that number is, um, you know, that number is not realistic, the 14% unemployment rate. I mean, that's a lot of temporary layoffs. They said 67%. I don't know what the stat is today. It's but, all bullshit. Uh, they don't count people that haven't been looking for work for two months. It's like, it's all bullshit. Though. They don't count people that went from full-time to part-time. They don't count lots of stuff, so it's all bullshit. Yeah. But, so, but so right now it's fourteen, but you know we we were at a really healthy five and a half percent unemployment rate prior to COVID. We got jobs. We got jobs. Yeah, right I mean, there's there one one of the problems is that a lot of people don't want the jobs that are available. They're beneath them. Exactly. Now, and so we need those. So, so the big. Um, uh, immigrant, what do they call them? The uh, the farmers. They've got the uh, the foreign uh, help uh, that come in from uh, the Philippines, Thailand, Mexico. They come and work on the migrant farmers. So when they come and work on these farms, these are people who have, you know, considerable amount of experience. Um, I've actually met a, a group of uh, mushroom farmers in um, in Ashburn. And uh, they have a considerable amount of experience for farming these particular crops, and they come in under the migrant farming program. So there's a there's an incentive for the farmers to be able to to have these uh, migrant workers come in because it, it saves them money. Um, you know, there's all sorts of jobs that people can be using in order to be able to have uh, use for you know bodies. But this is the Toronto real estate show. Darryl. Yes, it is. Our parts of Canada that are going to have a different attitude towards immigration, and there well, are going to be parts of Canada that have a different um economy to go back to once all this is done well and, and that's so so when yeah and that's why I, it's hard to bring canada into any of this conversation because like we said last week i mean toronto is so like canada is so irrelevant to toronto we, we we just do our own thing we go our own way we go about our business we just keep chugging along they're throwing stuff at us left and right, you know, like the federal government, the provincial government, the United States, like the 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 ne mother nature. Everybody's trying to stop this market and nothing can stop it. It just kind of slows it down for a little bit and then it gets going. I guess yeah. that's like any market, really. But this one in particular just seems to always like traject upwards with temporary delays from outside sources it's never because 
things are all screwed up here. We've overbuilt. Like, it's not like the United States, like in Miami, where they go so bonkers in the building boom that they build so many extra units because they build units before people even buy them. They just go crazy and they get all this borrowed money from the bank. They build all these buildings. And then the next thing you know, it's like, oh, hold on a sec. Maybe we should have put the brakes on a little bit and sold some of these things, right? The one thing about when the, the Canadian economy is um, in trouble is everybody inside the country is forced to go where there are jobs. Right? Forced to go where there, yeah. It redistributes yeah. So, the skilled work that currently so, exists. But right, right now, right now, we've got uh, a lot of jobs in Toronto. We've always had the best jobs. So not only are we going to be attracting the people from other parts of the world, but we're attracting all the other people from parts of Canada that aren't doing well, whether it be the East Coast or uh, the Prairies, which means that we're going to have constantly, um, you know, stimulation from from people bringing in their money and doing what they need to do, which means demand, which means that there's constantly going to be uh, – uh, the need for people to be buying Toronto real estate. It just, it never disappears. The only yeah. concern we always have is just if there happens to be too much supply, then that means that we're going to have like right now what's going on with the rental market. Then that means we're going to, we're not going to have the same pressure on prices. But for us to say, even in the, the, the worst years, um, you know, I don't have all the figures in front of me, but maybe 70, 70,000 transactions on the Toronto real estate board in one year. That's still a huge amount of people. Including and, rent. Is that, Purchases no, and rent. No, it's just purchases. Yep. Yeah. That's a year for Toronto Treb. Yep. Yeah. Not including new construction. Not including new. That's just on the MLS. Seventy thousand transactions. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty crazy. That's, that's a low year. Yeah, but that's a yeah, crazy we, number. We had over a hundred thousand there a couple of years ago, two years ago. Thank you.